Welcome to 10 Minute IELTS. Today, I'm going to talk about why I think listening should be harder than reading, but explain at the same time why I think most students get a lower score in reading than they do in listening. They should be equal in terms of scoring. If not, reading should be higher than listening in my opinion. Now, why is that? What, when you think about the test, the way the test is structured, in this listening test, you can hear the audio once only. Either you get the answer on that single play or you don't get the answer at all. On top of that, you're forced to keep up with the audio. You can't set the pace. Either you're able to listen to the, at the conversational speed that the speakers are talking at or you'll get left behind and will most likely be wrong. Now, that's the situation for the reading, listening test, I mean. But what about reading? If you notice, in the reading test, you're free to reread the same passage again and again and again. In fact, you could reread it an infinite number of times. Of course, granted, there is a time limit. Second of all, you can read at your own pace. You don't have to keep up with a speaker. You're not being forced to read quickly or, or, or re follow a certain dialogue at all. Um, you can read slowly or quickly. It's up to you. The listening test, you can't do that. So. I don't really know why it is what it is that reading that makes reading so much harder, but I do have a guess. On average, I see students get maybe 7.5 in listening, but they're only getting 6.5 in reading. And my guess is because we're not reading the same way we are listening. What do I mean? When you're given an audio, normally you have to listen to the entire dialogue word for word from start to end. That's how the listening test works. The listening audio will not skip a single word of the transcript. So I have the listening section four transcript here. And as you notice, the way the transcript for the section four of listening looks pretty much the same as how any reading test would look. Except again, in the listening test, they will read every single word out loud, word for word, at a conversational pace. But what's happening in reading? Well, in reading, most students don't do that, if not all. I don't think there's a single student who reads word for word. Most students do this. They're going to look for a keyword like Mark Granovetter, and then they're going to skim and scan the entire passage, skipping an entire paragraph, and then when they see the word Mark Granovetter, oh, I think that the answer is here, or maybe the answer is here, or, or maybe the answer is wherever I see the name Mark Granovetter again. And you notice there's no comprehension at all. They're not reading the words. They're just looking for keywords. And then they're assuming that they'll find the answer right next to that keyword. My problem with this is that whether it's listening or reading, it is a comprehension test. It's not really a skimming and scanning test. Now, let's compare that skimming and scanning style that most students do in reading as to how we answer the listening test. I'm going to play the audio, we're going to listen to it, and then we're going to answer questions 31 to 34 based on what we hear on the audio. Let's begin. Good morning. Today, we're thinking about the way that technology is influencing our social structures and the way we interact with one another. Humans, as we know, have always lived in groups. Without this arrangement, our species would have died out long ago. But now, the way we see and define our group is changing. I'd like to start by mentioning the research of American sociologist Mark Granovetter in 1973. It was Granovetter who first coined the term weak ties, which he used to refer to people's loose acquaintances. In other words, friends of friends. His research showed that weak ties had a significant effect on the behavior and choices of populations and this influence was something highly important in the fields of information science and politics, and as you can imagine, marketing also. So, these friends of friends, people we might spend time with at social or work gatherings, might not be like us, but they can still have a positive influence because we share the same sort of interests. That's enough to make a connection, and this connection can turn out to be more beneficial than we might suspect. An example of this, an example of how the connection can influence us, 
is when our weak ties get in touch and pass on details about jobs they think might be suitable for us. Well, since Granovetter first came up with this theory, his work has been cited in over 19,000 papers. Some of these studies have looked at how weak tie networks are useful to us in other ways. And one thing that seems to improve as a result of weak tie influence is our health. All right, I'm going to stop the audio there. We're not going to answer the whole thing to save up on time. Keep this video in 10 minutes. But you see how easy it was for me to get the answers to 31, 32, 33, and 34? I didn't, you mean in the listening test, you don't skim and scan. You are forced to listen to every single word at a conversational pace. But let's see if, um, you know, um, that's what we do in reading. Again, when you do the reading test, what will happen is, oh, I'm going to skim and scan for Mark Granovetter. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is again. Now let's skim and scan for 1973. There's 1973. Um, what else? What else? Weak ties. Weak ties. There's the word weak ties. I'll, I'll get that. Um, all right. Um, I, I'm going to look for the word information science, I guess. Science, science, science. Other oh, science. Um, there's the word, um, where's, where's the word? Politics. There's politics. Okay. And there's the word and. And the closest word next to and is the word imagine. So the answer must be imagine. Do you see what happened there? You know, the, I was just skimming and scanning for the exact same keywords. And then I looked for the keyword that was closest to um, science and politics. And I got the word imagine. And I made that my answer. But guess what? The answer imagine is wrong. It doesn't make sense. For, for you to read, oh, populations in the fields of information, science, politics, and imagine. But why do students do that? Why do students come up with this answer? Simply because they're not comprehending. Students are not bothering to understand what is being said by the passage. And a lot of students might argue that, Sir, I don't have enough time to read everything word for word. But did you listen to the audio and see how much time it took for me to answer 31, 32, 33, and 34? It barely took me three minutes. Three minutes and I've answered four different items because I was simply listening word for word at a conversational and casual pace. Right, let's make another example. Let's say I'm going to look for the keyword similar enough. Because if I find the word similar enough, then I'll, I'll, I'll get the answer interest maybe. So similar enough, similar enough, similar, 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 similar. I, ah, there's, there's the keyword enough. But I'm not seeing the word similar. So is the answer connection? Maybe, maybe I have to put in the word connection there, um, similar enough connection. Oh my God, this test is so hard. Reading is so difficult compared to listening. I think reading is so... But remember, what are we doing here? We're just skimming and scanning for keywords. We're not comprehending anything. And chances are, <laughs> the keywords will have been paraphrased. Yes, you got the word enough, but the word similar may have been paraphrased. And if you read properly, You'll see here that the word was paraphrased into same sort, at least same sort. And the answer was always interests the whole time. That's how you get the word interest by reading word for word and identifying that paraphrase and then answering based on what you understood. But no, students don't read that way. They focus so much on the keyword. They look at that word enough and then you see connection and then they're going to give the answer connection here. And guess what? The answer connection is wrong. So I hope with this video, it's clear why students are probably getting a lower score in reading compared to listening. And that's because, well, yes, we do have these downsides. In the listening test, at least, we listen word for word. We don't skip a single word in the listening test. Also, we listen at a conversational pace. We're not rushing. We're not looking for a keyword like a madman and then trying to answer the question. And because of this, you know, we listen word for word, we listen at a casual case, we have better comprehension. And that better comprehension is what leads to the higher score in listening. But again, what happens in reading? Um, instead in reading, we skim and scan, um, we rush and don't understand. And because of that, what happens is, at the end of the day, we have poorer comprehension. So my point and lesson here is please stop skimming and scanning and rushing like a madman. Try to read word for word at a casual pace. Just give it a try. See if you'll be able to get a better score 
in reading if you treat it like the listening test. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with your review.